Metaphysics offers us a fresh outlook to approach the world, introducing us to a new realm of reality. However, many who study metaphysics may make the mistake of trying to alter the world around them. What is often neglected is that metaphysics does not aim to change the world, instead, its core principle revolves around changing ourselves. Our thoughts about the world are what matter, not the world itself. To live effectively, it is crucial not to focus on fixing the world and people's behavior, but rather to see things from a perspective of truth. The key is to see things rightly rather than trying to set them right. Right seeing is the core of truth, and metaphysics is a method that helps us to see things from the highest point of view. It can be argued that the issue of striving for truth and not trying to fix everything is not limited to the study of metaphysics but applies to all types of education. As humans, our ability to think sets us apart from other creatures. However, our education system focuses more on what to think rather than how to think. We are taught to memorize and repeat information without truly understanding the process of thinking. This is also true in the study of metaphysics. We are told that we are mental beings and the key is to think a certain way. We focus on techniques, treatments, and affirmations, and train ourselves to repeat them without necessarily understanding the reasoning behind them. In order to truly develop our minds, we need to be taught how to think, not just what to think. We need to be introduced to the process of critical thinking and how to apply it to our lives. This will help us to gain a deeper understanding of ourselves and the world around us. The average person's thought process is often automatic and reactive. External events trigger emotions such as worry, fear, and happiness, and we assume that our thoughts are a direct response to the circumstances we encounter. We tend to believe that the mind is contained within our physical bodies and serves as a tool to interact with the external world. In this way, life becomes a series of reactions to stimuli, with little control over our thoughts and feelings. We may even justify our emotional reactions by saying that anyone in our situation would feel the same way. Whether we feel happy or sad, or believe life has meaning or not, seems to be determined by our daily experiences. Many of us even rely on external factors such as checking the weather, the stock market or even consulting with a doctor to determine our mood. But it's important to understand that experiences don't cause our thoughts. Even when someone does something to upset us, we have the power to choose how we react. We can either choose to be upset or not. It's not about denying that something happened or that people are doing things in the world, it's about recognizing that our thoughts are independent of external circumstances. The events that happen in our lives become part of the past once they occur. However, our experience of these events is determined by our attitudes, feelings, and habits. It's important to understand that our thoughts are not caused by external events. Rather, our thoughts are a product of our own consciousness and our habitual patterns of thinking. Our minds are our own domain, and we have the ability to choose what we think and how we react to the events that happen around us. Therefore, it's crucial to become aware of our thoughts and to develop a conscious choice in how we think and respond. Recall the moment when you last exclaimed, he made me so angry. However, this statement is incorrect since nobody can make you feel angry or upset. As I always say, you feel upset because you have a tendency to be upset. When you get angry, it is because you have a certain level of consciousness towards anger that causes it to manifest within yourself. The anger already exists inside you, and when an incident occurs, 
it triggers the anger like a little red button that sets it off. Therefore, your reaction to the incident is based on your attitudes and consciousness. Often, we let our mental control slip away from us. Many people are not aware that they possess the power to manage the thoughts that race through their minds. It's important to understand that our mind is the basis of our study of truth. When we find ourselves deeply upset, concerned, anxious or worried about something that has happened, we need to take a moment to reflect on ourselves. Instead of asking questions like, why do they do this? Why is the world falling apart? Or, why do we have so many problems in life? We should ask ourselves why we allow people, experiences or things to dictate how we think, feel or behave. It's within our power to change this. We are also inclined to fall prey to group psychology, race beliefs and subliminal suggestion. We permit the programming of mass media to control our thoughts because we've permitted ourselves to react. The reason why mass media is so successful is because we are led into a life that isn't genuinely ours, but rather one that is conditioned by external stimuli. However, this happens because we reject the responsibility of our own thoughts. The first and foremost step in the art of thinking is to understand that no matter what happens in your life, you always have the power of choice. Regardless of external circumstances, you have the ability to choose how you think, feel, and react. You do not have to let negative emotions control you, you can choose to think positively and creatively. By doing so, you can become the master of your own mind and life. However, this is not an easy task as it requires discipline, willpower, and commitment. It is challenging to shift from being a reactive thinker to a creative thinker, but it is possible with persistence and effort. Keep in mind that thinking positively when you are unhappy may seem difficult, but it is necessary to break the cycle of negative thinking. We unconsciously generate negative thoughts that match our negative mindset, creating a harmful cycle. Therefore, if someone asks us what we do, we should be truthful and say we are manufacturers, always producing outcomes that align with our current state of mind. We don't do this intentionally, but it happens automatically. One can achieve true liberation by freeing themselves from their mind. The first step towards this liberation is to pay attention to the voice in your head and recognize any repetitive thought patterns that have been playing for years. By watching the thinker, or being the witnessing presence, you can listen to your thoughts impartially without judgment. Through this practice, you can become aware of yourself as the witness of the thought, and a new dimension of consciousness arises. This consciousness is not a thought, but rather a sense of your own presence that arises from beyond the mind. As you listen to the thought impartially, you will feel a conscious presence, your deeper self, behind or underneath the thought. The thought loses its power over you and subsides because you are no longer identifying with it. This process leads to the beginning of the end of involuntary and compulsive thinking. The gaps of no mind that occur when thoughts subside provide a sense of stillness and peace that deepen with practice. As you progress, you will also feel a subtle emanation of joy arising from deep within, the joy of being.